Requiring a closed session. We have one item, 4.1. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One of Councilor Thompson, do you have a can question? Can I ask that the uh, clauses be split? Mr. Clark? Just no way to do it because it's just re as, as per the recommendation. Of, yep. Yeah. Or direction given. Mr. Clark? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, one item of council reporting of closed session. The motion is to receive the report and that confidential direction to staff be confirmed. Okay. Someone like to move that? Councilor Gallo, second by Councilor Gillan. I'll record a vote. Record a vote for council reporting out of closed session. Councilor Weiss, how do you vote? Councilor Weiss votes yes. Councilor Thompson? Yes. Councilor Thompson votes yes. Mayor Maracas? Yes. Councilor Gillan? Yes. Councilor Gillan votes yes. Councilor Kim? Councilor Kim votes yes. Councilor Gallo? Councilor Gallo votes yes. And Councilor Gartner? Yes. Yeah. Councilor Gartner votes yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Firman bylaw. I'd like to move that. Councillor Gardner, seconded by Councillor Thompson. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Motion to adjourn. Councillor Weiss, Councillor Gilliland. All those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Mr. Clerk, the time is 7 02. I'm going to call this council meeting to order. The town of Aurora acknowledges that the Anishinaabe lands on which we live and work are the traditional and treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island, as well as many other nations whose presence here continues to this day. As the closest First Nation community to Aurora, we recognize the special relationship the Chippewas have with the lands and waters of this territory. They are the water protectors and environmental stewards of these lands, and as a municipality, we join them in these responsibilities. We further acknowledge that Aurora is part of the treaty lands of the Mississaugas and Chippewas recognized through Treaty Number 13, as well as the Williams Treaties of 1923. A shared understanding of the rich cultural heritage that has existed for centuries and how our collective past brought us to where we are today will help us walk together into a better future. Council, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? And I need two thirds because we have an added delegation. Councillor Gardner, Councillor Gilliland, comments, questions? Can I call the vote. Me scribe. Everyone's square. Linda, who am I missing? Councillor Weiss? Are you still on the screen? Okay, you have to stay on the screen. Oh, Councillor Gillen? Councillor Gillen, can you just, just tell me? No. Yes, Councilor Yellowlands, yes. Well, that carries. Any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, no community presentations. We have three delegations. First up, 6.1, John Caperi. Caperi. Close enough. No, everyone messes up my last name too, so I'm good. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, just get you to state your name and you have five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Worship, the Council. My name is John Caprera. I've been a uh, resident of Aurora for the last 25 years. 
Sorry? Yeah, can we get the table up better? Do you want me to start over or did you catch that? There's a little button there right beside you that says raise. If we hit no, that, it'll lift a bit higher. There we go. Oh. It'll, it'll get closer to you. Easy. <laughs> Thank you. All right. The better, I guess, eh? Absolutely. Okay. So I oh. about uh, the Windrow service or the lack of. Um, and um, I'm sure it's a subject that you guys have heard over and over again every winter. And I just like to bring a few things to your attention. I've uh, been hearing from uh, neighbors, friends, and other residents uh, that the snow left behind by the plow can be heavy uh, with ice and uh, also wet and very difficult for people to move. And because of that, I think the, uh, we need to have a system where we can assist the residents. Um, it makes it difficult uh, for people that have physical conditions, people who have uh, mental issues, and people that are just not strong enough to do it. I also think that uh, today the technology and the equipment is available to be able to assist these people much easier than it was a while back. So it's interesting that uh, Aurora, Aurora is surrounded uh, by towns where the red, red, residents benefit uh, from the assistance program, um, and the and the reason why is that their council has heard their residents and has taken the time to implement a system. So you look at King, you look at Vaughn, uh, you look at Markham, to name a few, and there's maybe another dozen that I could name. They all have programs to help with the removal of the windrow. Um, so I think you can't avoid the snow, and you can't avoid not plowing it, but I think we can no longer uh, not avoid uh, having a withdrawal system uh, to be able to address the issues uh, that uh, I think a lot of residents need in Aurora. So I think that um, a lot of residents would be very appreciative if uh, it's a system to a system is implemented. And I think they would be very grateful to uh, yourself and all the counselors. So that's my little spiel. Thank you. Councilor Gardner, get a motion to receive and refer to 10.1. Councilor Gardner, Councilor Gilliland, any comments or questions to the delegate? Councilor Gilliland. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much, John, for coming and speaking today. I know that um, you and I had some conversations offline about some of the snow windrow issues, and I know it's a hot topic, and I know it's something that's townwide that we do have concerns with, and, you know, the elderly especially or physically challenged. Um, you know, this is a first step. So I want to thank you for um, actually giving me some of the resources that you had brought attention to, which is centralhealthline.ca. Um, and uh, I don't know where you got that resource, but it was very, very helpful. Um, but you you do have some experience and background in this field. Do you not as far as the technologies? Yeah, are able to help if you need it. Awesome. That's great. I'm really glad to hear that we can at least reach out to some very experienced people. Because I know times have changed in the last, say, 15 years since maybe we had looked at that. And uh, I appreciate that. Within the uh, central healthline.ca, it outlines pretty much all York Region municipalities that offer this. And, and uh, that is a resource that you've shared with me. So I just kind of want to put that out there and say thanks. I'm up to par with the other uh, towns. So I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, John. Any other questions? I was not dismissed. That's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, you're good now. No, no other questions. Thank you. Uh, call the vote. Is it, it's just Councillor Gardner? Councillor Gardner, did you want to just tell me while you're getting it? Uh, okay. We're, we're good?
that carries. Um, Council, just just uh, for uh, a re refresher, you must be on the actual agenda when the vote is, and you have to remain on it. If you move to another item or if you look at somewhere else, it'll it'll the vote won't go through. Okay. The next six point two, John Noel, resident. This is a written de delegation. So if I can get a motion to to receive and refer to ten point one, Councillor Gillen. Second, Councillor Gallo. Any any questions? That written delegation. Yes, Councillor Gardner. Oh, we could if you'd like. Sure, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, beginning, uh, Mr. Noel's. Uh, delegation right now. We've lived in Aurora almost 34 years and are now seniors. We live at 279 Aurora Heights Drive, which is a local bus route, and that snow gets cleared quickly after a snow snowfall event. The plow leaves a ridiculously large wind, windrow at the end of our driveways, and I do not want to experience a heart attack trying to remove this snow so I can get it out of my driveway. I would suggest that if someone does experience a medical event removing snow on this on the portion of the town property at the end of the driveways, the town could very well be liable. We moved from North York to Aurora way back, and then the municipality had their act together and used equipment to protect the end of the driveways from having large windrows. The equipment to protect the end of driveways from large windows is out there, and it's time Aurora started using it. As a side note, the sidewalk clear destroys our lawns, and there's better equipment out there that does a, job, a better job throwing the snow aside rather than plowing it. Respectfully, John Noel. Thank you, Mr. Clark. All the vote. Councilor Gardner. Councilor Gardner is yes. That carries. Next we have 6.3, Boris Gartsbeam. Boris, welcome. This is also in regarding 10.1. Boris, I just get you to state your name and you have five minutes. Good to see you again too, Boris. Yeah, you too. <laughs> okay, could you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, good evening. I am Boris Garsbin and I am also a resident of Aurora. So I am also came here to support the motion of Councilor Rachel. Gilliland, and uh, I absolutely agree with Mr. John, previous speaker. Every word, hundred percent, in purpose. So, I also came to talk about the program for snow windrow clearing for seniors and people. Oops. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'm talking about a program for snow windrow clearing for seniors and people with disabilities. Uh, I don't want to repeat what is snow windrow. I guess everybody knows that it's basically a pile of snow left by the snow plow at the bottom of the, of the driveway. Also, as you know, many municipalities near Aurora, such as King City, Markham, Richmond Hill, Vaughan, Stouffville, have the snow windrow clearing services. They are different, but all of them are taking care of seniors and people with disabilities. So please do something similar, even the most cost even in, in the most cost efficient way, like it is done in King City or Markham. I am talking on behalf of many people. Yesterday. The petition has been started at the seniors' meeting 
at Aurora Family Ledger Complex. And 20 people, now it's 21 out, out of 23, signed it. Many seniors and people with disabilities, disabilities need your help. Please don't ignore us. Please, please help us. And this is a petition, what I'm talking about. 21 names so far on this. If you want, I can read every name, but that's, that's it. So again, we are hoping for your help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Boris. Oh, any oh, just, any just questions? wait so, there just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Council, can I get a motion to receive and refer to 10.1? Councilor Gallo, Councilor Gilliland, any questions? Councilor Gardner. Uh, I'd just like to thank Boris as well as the other two gentlemen for coming um, and also for the petition. That's, uh, is this just, is this from your street, your area? Boris? Well, what happened? Um, I, yesterday I came to the meeting. It was really a meeting, basically seniors playing at uh, in pickleball at, uh, at the oh. Aurora uh, Family Ledger Complex. And I also part of the group. So I talked to people and uh, it was it was basically a great success. It was about maybe 28 people, but some people not from Aurora, some people live in uh, Richmond Hill and New Market, but majority it's Aurora residents. So only people from Aurora signed this petition. So this is what happened um, yesterday. And basically I hope this Petition will grow. I don't know if it's necessary or not. I'm, I'm not really ex experienced, and basically I'm speaking probably first time in my in my life in such a great audience. But anyway, this is what uh, how it was started. Councilor. Well, thank you for doing a good job without former experience. Thank you, Councilor Councilor Gillen. Thank you, Boris. I just wanted to also, Mr. Mayor, rather, I rather I want to thank you as well. Thank you for coming and speaking. Thank you for getting those signatures so quickly. Um, I know you and I had spoken briefly, and uh, the fact that uh, you were able to rally 20 people to sign right away really speaks volumes on, um, you know, like what would happen if you're out there for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks, how much that would have grown. So I really do appreciate you speaking to this and supporting the motion. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Boris. Yeah. Okay. Council, I'll call the vote. Thank you, Council Gardner. Council Gardner's yes. That carries. Council, I am going to go through a few of the items that so see if anyone wants to pull anything. And then once we get the consideration of items that have, have been pulled, plus the ones that are on our council agenda for discussion. Um, if any, unless anyone has any objections, I'm going to pull 10.1, which is the motion considering we have uh, some residents here. For that and if everyone's good with that that's what i'm going to do unless i see anyone objecting that's the path we're going to take okay so we'll start with consent agenda are there any questions on that otherwise i'll ask for a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda anyone want to move that councillor kim councillor thompson any comments questions call the vote Councilor Gardner, I'll wait a sec to see if it works. Otherwise, I'll be asking you. Oh, there we go. It's good. It worked. That carries. All right. Standing committee reports, uh, all both 8.1, 8.2. Are there any items that anyone wants pulled? Councilor Gallo? Uh, 8.1.2. 
That's committee structure review, updated policy for ad hoc advisory committee and local boards. That's the one? Yeah. Okay. Are we doing 8.2 or just 8.1? Sorry, which which is the other one that you said? Uh, 8.2.4. 8.2.4, budget committee meeting report of January 23rd. What's that? What's the item? Well, we can, once I once I get to it, we can we can deal with that. Okay, anything else, Councilor Councilor Thompson? It's the same one, okay. Councilor Reese? 8.2.3. Budget committee meeting report, January 16th. Right. Okay. Anything else? No, anyone else? Councilor Gardner? 0.1.3. Secondary suites and residential homes, building inspections. Okay. Anything else? That was a no. Okay. Thank you. So can I get a motion to approve? Oh, Councilor Thompson. Just first. Pardon? One sec, Councilor. We I will be asking once we get to the item, the specific item within the item. I'll ask for that number once we get to it. So that way we're not all digging through it right now. So once we get to that item, I'll ask for that specific item that you want to actually pull within the item. Okay. Councilor Thompson, did you want to? It's six, just for a separate vote. 8.1.6, just for a vote. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Motion then to approve the remaining items, which are, I'll say motion to approve all items with the exception of the ones that have been pulled, 8.1.2, 8.1.3, 8.1.6, 8.2.3, and 8.2.4. Someone like to move that. Councillor Kim, Councillor Gillan. Call a vote. Now it's not working. Councilor Gardner? Councilor Gardner's yes. That carries. Okay, Council. So we are moving to items requiring discussion. Um, so, like I said, I'm, I mentioned I'm going to pull 10.1 forward. Uh, so, we'll start with the motion by Councilor Gilliland. Councilor Gilliland, uh, would you like to move your motion? Please. Thank you. Seconder. Councillor Gardner. Councillor Gillan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, well, as we all know, windrows have really been a hot topic of discussion for a number of years in Aurora. And uh, yes, I do recall that we did bring this into council on a town-wide approach, um, probably in 2019, early 2019. And at that time, I realized that we did feel that the cost at that time was was high and we weren't interested in um, spending that kind of money um, at the because it would affect the ta tax levy and so and so forth. Um, I also realized we do have a volunteer system, which is great with snow angels and so forth, but I've always had received emails from people to say it's not always reliable. So um, I do feel that, you know, there is a, an option to look outside of that. Um, now, having said that with a little bit of history, I do understand we are aiming for um, a tr transition to move more in-house services. So hopefully within that, it results in some more cost savings down the road. Um, moving forward, while a town-wide approach um, it might be something we don't want to entertain at this time, what I would like to entertain and explore is a special assistance program. And that would be targeted to people who have or are physically challenged and or seniors and so forth um, for something to explore. Um, other than that, I have received some information how other municipalities have put this together with a special application. 
Um, and it's something that, you know, we should be looking into, at least I feel there's opportunities here. Um, that application could, could include uh, some realistic criteria that um, could be applied. It could be including the subsidized uh, service, um, pretty much what we choose, how that going forward would look, and maybe some options for a pilot program. Um, ultimately, I do feel like this is something that shouldn't be overlooked. And, you know, I really hope that my fellow colleagues are willing to keep the possibility open so we can provide some services to people in our town who really do need this help. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Oh, no, no. No. <laughs> Sorry. It's now it's council. We don't interact with the public. Sorry. Councillor Thompson. Uh, thank you. I'm certainly supportive of a report coming back, but you know I would uh, encourage the report to uh, look at not just the cost of implementing such a service, but also uh, the service levels and the expectations associated with it. So, for example, if you go on to the Markham or Vaughan sites, they talk about windrow clearing being six to eight hours after the street clearing. The street has been cleared um, here in Aurora. You know, if that's that expectation, well. We say to residents, it could be up to 16 hours before your street is cleared. So in theory, on a worst case scenario, it could be the next day before your windrow is cleared. And so in speaking to um, some councillors in, in those municipalities, that's where the challenge lies, is that residents, some have an expectation that their windrow will be cleared right away. But it may not happen until the next day, which then creates a service level issue. And so um, when the report comes back, I just would encourage staff to explore that that side of it so that we don't just have it from a cost implications but also from a service level how that could be managed how we can uh, manage the residents expectations because that's the bigger challenge that I hear from others is that you know just like we get calls today when their streets aren't cleared and then they get calls because their windrow is not being cleared and it's a service they perceive they're being paid for and when they're told well it may not happen until the next day that doesn't resolve their concerns or issues because they want to get out right away. And from what I've heard, you know, uh, some councillors got a call and said, you know, my wife's got a doctor's appointment at 10 a.m. I need you to come by and clear the window. Well, then the answer is, well, we, we can't get out right away. I mean, it, there's a process to it all. And so this is part of the information council needs to have in their deliberations with regards to the service, not just the cost, but what kind of service level, the expectations, how this can be managed so that way we have the fulsome facts before moving forward. You know, I certainly like Councillor Gilliland's idea of looking at a smaller scope to begin with those that, you know, with uh, specific needs or to accommodate uh, those that, you know, for, for one reason or another, uh, have challenges to doing it as opposed to a town-wide service or piloting it, for example. But again, let's look at it from both a cost perspective as well as a service perspective and the expectations that our residents may or may not have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Yawa. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to have staff weigh in on, on um, well, two things, what they think about this approach as well as timing to get a report back. Thank you. Mr. Downey, timing on the report. Through, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, um, we wouldn't be able to have this report in time for this winter season. This, my understanding, would be a pilot that would be uh, looked at for uh, next year's or, or the end of this year's winter season. Um, um, so I would say we're probably looking at June or July, something along those lines with regards to a, to a report um, uh, from a timing perspective. Um, we will identify... Um, service levels in the report and some of the challenges with regards to uh, to those service levels and and there are many uh, with regards to wind row removal. Um, we need to be clear of what our expectations are. I think we've done a, a very good job uh, uh, indicating to people when they feel their roads are going to be cleared and the timing of that. And I I, I, I believe that that has been. Um, uh, well received in the community. I am concerned that if we do bring in a service such as this, there will be an expectation that it will uh, it will be in a timely fashion. And I am concerned that um, uh, what what we what level of service we could actually provide without uh, looking at additional staff, looking at additional equipment. But all of that will be in the report. Councilor, 
Thank you. Um, my only concern with, with timing is that, you know, enough time for us to digest and to make a decision and enough time for staff to, if we move forward with it, to implement it in, in a, our budget process. And June or July might seem a little late to have a thorough discussion and it's going to be a lot of back and forth and a, and a good understanding before we move forward. Um, that's my one concern that it might have to come earlier if possible so that we can we can, you know, do a proper job with this and have enough time if we want to implement it for next year um, to have it part. It has to be part of that budget process, which is typically, I think, starts in August, September. Is that possible? To Mr. Reason? Downing, do you, do you through, think that that time frame would be able to get the budget? And uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't want to anticipate, you know, what these things are going to be or what the issues are going to be. I can tell you when uh, Richmond Hill um implemented their uh windrow program they bought 40 new pieces of equipment and hired 40 new staff um so i'm not looking at to that extent we're not looking at going town wide my understanding is um but there will be definitely some capital and operating expenses and um it would have to be something in the report and then council would have to then at that time determine whether or not they wanted to do an uh, an in year uh capital or operating expense or whether or not uh, this was going to have to be delayed uh till uh, uh, the following year when the budget could be considered um but i i do believe there will be a budget implication uh no matter what we do um it also depends on how people how many how much uptake there is so if it is an application process um uh, i was around when we had tried this in 2007 or 8 um, and there was an application process. Um, it was um, fairly well received at the beginning. However, um, near the end, there were very few participants. So it uh, it sounded like a really good idea. A lot of people were really excited about it, and then it just didn't seem to work out that well. Um, so so there are some concerns with regards to how we how, how this unfolds. So I'll do my best to get a report earlier. My concern is. Um, there's a lot of different factors. Uh, the delegates themselves have said there, there are uh, a number of different models out there, Markham's model or Vaughn's model or Richmond Hill's model or King's model. Um, and, and all of those need to be researched, find out, uh, sp speaking with those staff uh, from those municipalities, what their issues are, how they got past those issues, what kind of uh, um, satisfaction level people are having with it, with, with the service, that type of thing because I believe that's what council will want to have um, with our report in order to help them make a decision. Councilor? Well, if the intent is for next next winter, then then it's clear that we would have to have, uh, you know, these kind of details at least by May. Um, and I don't know if that's pushing it, but once we, you know, get into June, July, the chances of getting to a button budget are pretty slim. I'd, I'd say that's, that could be wrong. Um, but if that's the intent, then that's kind of the timeline that I that I see. I support it. Uh, I think we should explore it. Um, but I think we should determine when is it to, that we want to potentially implement it. I guess we got our work cut out for us, eh, Councillor? <laughs> Councillor Garner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We always hear about problems with windrows, but this year has been exceptional in the number of phone calls and emails I've received, I don't know about other counselors. Um, I was around when we tried that project, uh, but that was 15 years ago. And we now have residents that are 15 years older. And we do have one of the fastest and largest uh, populations in York region. And these people have paid taxes for a long time. And um, frankly, they, they need help. Um, and uh, we may also want to look at the behavior of some of the snow plow drivers. Um, I've heard a couple of instances which seem to me to be uh, very rude behavior. In any case, um, I'm speaking with the manager on that. But um, you know, we have three gentlemen here tonight, but I can tell you 
they, they represent a lot of people and they represent a lot of people town wide. I'm not sure if they're in every one of our wards, but I would say that they're in the majority of our wards and we need, we need to try and do something. So I look forward to your information, Mr. Downey, and I thank you in advance. Um, is, do you have enough staff to do this work? Do you want counselors to help you? Do you want a committee? Mr. Oh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Downing? Through you, Mr. Mayor, we're capable of preparing the report. Um, that's not what my concern is. Uh, um, it's just that I want to make, I would like to be able to give council as much information as possible. Um, um, as they say, there's a, net, there's a number of different models out there. I'm not sure council has um, has a, a clear vision of exactly what model they want to use in Aurora. And I think that's something that we need to help council um, identify. Um, so I, I'd like to give you as much information as possible, which is the reason I want as much time in the report as possible. Um, maybe I, maybe I, I try to get the report earlier with less information. Um, uh, and that, that might work for council. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, we can start very soon on putting this together. Um, but as they say, there's a number of moving parts with regards to how this uh, how this unfolds, and it will have impacts on other parts of the operation um, that I will also identify in the report. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Follow up. Um, um, perhaps it would be a good idea to um, look at different models for. Uh, municipalities that are more or less our size and report back to council with what those models might be. And council could uh, make a decision on what model they would like to follow. Would that, would that be of any help, Mr. Downey? Mr. Downey, I'm assuming you're gonna present all models, but maybe if you can just kind of picture us uh, what municipalities are doing that are considerably our size, and, but I'm sure you're gonna present even more and beyond that. Ab absolutely, uh, we will. Um, as you can appreciate, as much snow falls in a small municipality as in a large <laughs> municipality. So um, <laughs> I don't think that has a whole lot to do with it. Absolutely. But it's it's uh, it's actually how you perform that that program. Yeah. So um, that's that's really where, where the concern is. How quickly they go out, who is it? Is it in-house staff? Is it in-house equipment? Is it contracted staff? Is there a charge associated with that? Um, those types of things uh, are, are what we want to research because each municipality is taking a different approach with regards to it. Mm -hmm. Councillor? And that would be exactly what the report would be that would come back to us, just the different models, the logistics, maybe the problems, the positives. It's just, it's just going to be report on the different models. I'd, Mr. Downey, I'm, I'm assuming different models, costs, right. all sorts. Yeah, Mr. Downey, through through you, Mr. Mayor, um, uh, I'd recommend I'd put a recommendation in. Uh, so I I generally try to give you my best advice. Um, so you'll see a recommendation. It will be council. There'll also be options within that report, and council can say, you know what. I don't like the recommendation, but I kind of like option three or whatever it happens to be, or uh, I like maybe a combination of option one and three or whatever it ha happens to be. So, so there will be a recommendation identified there, but that recommendation will be based on what we feel is the, is the, the best model for Aurora based on the information that we have. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Downey. I look forward to that as soon as possible. Thank you. By the way, that was a good joke about <laughs> snow. <laughs> Councillor Weiss. Thank you. Um, I, my question really is about, um, and I agree with the other councillors about the importance of this. It seems to be uh, coming to us more and more often. Um, the, uh, my question has to do with a little bit of what Councillor Gala was saying about the urgency of this, because I sense there's some urgency, particularly in certain people, uh, people that have infirmities, people who are not just trying to get out of a little work and and uh, not a little work, some significant work, but um, also have dental appointments and other things. And I'm wondering if you could tell us whether there is a fee for service uh, model. Perhaps we could do some work on identifying a reputable 
a company and I know the snow angels are there, but uh, maybe uh, I've had a conversation with a couple of people who have had interest in providing this service on a fee for service basis. I know they're looking at it from a tax perspective, but uh, do you see any sense uh, through you, Mayor, to uh, Mr. Downey of um, pre-approving some uh, commercial providers for those people who have a sense of urgency to get this done in their windrow? Mr. Downey? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, um, in discussing just that option, um, it would be my recommendation that we could start that next week. Um, once I put a tender together and say, I'm looking for removal for windrows and I'm looking at the best cost, um, uh, council make a decision that it's a 100% cost recovery and anybody could then apply for it whether you had infirmities or not, whether you're able-bodied, just simply didn't want to remove a windrow. So that's simply providing a contract service that someone can, can purchase. Mm -hmm. And so that could, that could be a model that we could, we could look at. Um, most of the windrow programs that I'm aware of have no cost associated with them. So if council wants a cost associated with this, then that will be an option we will provide, but that isn't the indication I'm getting right now. It's looking at providing a service that uh, to to these um, um, to certain residents. But um, as I say, the previous model or the previous uh, program that we had, there was a cost associated with it. It was a subsidized cost, so it was being supported by the taxpayer only and only partially paid for by by the resident. So um, uh, if we're looking at 100% cost recovery, that's simply engaging a contractor and getting a list of people who want to, who want to pay the fee and, and, having that, and having that person go out and clear that windrow. Um, but I didn't get the impression that was the program that Councillor Gillian was looking for within, the, within her notice of motion. Councillor? Thank you. Um, I don't... I can't speak for Councilor Gilliland about whether that's a, an option now or whether it can be separated out, uh, but I think it's something that needs to be considered just and just because of the concerns that we have with uh, some of the residents here who are genuinely um, uh, and I don't want to use the necessarily the word infirm, but they dread the thoughts of the windrows because they know it'll be days and they may be shut in for a while. So uh, I just wanted to bring it up and ask a question. I thank you for the answer. Thank you. Councillor Kim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am all in support of uh, a feasibility study um, to look into uh, windrow removal assistance. And certainly this winter has not been any different from any previous winters where I've received a lot of uh, comments and feedback from residents and seniors asking for uh, windrow service or some kind of subsidized um, service. And some of them are, were willing to pay on their own, but thought that maybe the, having the accountability and the backing of the, the town would uh, have the contractor provide uh, better service as opposed to a private one. Uh, given you know, what I've heard in, in my investigations over the years, I think the issue of service levels and expectations, that's going to be a challenging one um, to be overcome, uh, quite honestly. Uh, but I, be, I look forward to what staff will have to bring. Hopefully there might be some surprises. I think uh, with regards to Mr. Downey's comment about uh, the pricing, um, this is Councillor Gilliland's uh, motion but I suspect that pricing has to be part of this because if we're just going to have service options without uh, costing to it, then I think we're missing a big component of it. I think part of this report, you know, I would like staff to bring back is uh, if we were to do various um, charging methods, because I've heard from some clients or some uh, some residents that they'd be happy to pay the full amount, but they would just like the, the town to coordinate it. I've heard some uh, residents say that it'd be nice if it was subsidized somehow, or they get the pricing uh, that comes with economies of scale. Uh, and I've heard from some residents, uh, you know, a few years ago when we were discussing this, that 
you know, those who live in, you know, a, a mid-rise where they don't need a snow removal service, you know, uh, you know, they're concerned about their own property tax bill because they don't need it. Why are they paying for it? Uh, so I would like staff to come back with, is there a way that this can be targeted so that those residents uh, living in mid-rises or condo corporations, uh, townhouses, where their taxes won't go up because of this added service? Uh, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and if those who uh, do want the service, is there any way that we can add it to their property taxes. I mean, uh, so it's, there's a lot of targeting and I'm not sure if that's possible. Um, Miss uh, Wainwright Van Kessel, you know, if she has the answer, she can respond now, but she doesn't have to, you can come back and wait for the, uh, the report. But I think those are the things that uh, we need to have addressed uh, if we're gonna have a fulsome report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gilliland, second time. Thank you. Um, just following up with some of the comments that I heard around the table. Um, but first, I just want to say that um, there are a lot of uh, municipalities have obviously partaken in this. And so there's a lot of experience from us to draw on. We can learn a lot from their mistakes. We can learn a lot from um, the positive things and negative things. And to your point, um, we did do something in 2008. And like, what can we learn from that? This is a great opportunity for us to be a little bit more forward thinking and saying, okay, what can we change to make this more successful? absolutely set expectations. That's like number one. It's kind of like, okay, this is not going to be done guaranteed in 48 hours, whatever that is, parameters that we want to say, but people have the choice whether or not they want to agree to those terms or not. And it's got to be clear. Um, but this is what we're trying to uh, look into as far as this, um, you know, various parameters of applications. What does that mean? Um, my opening remarks um, had stated um, the possibility is subsidized. Absolutely. Let's look into that. Like maybe it's a partial cost recovery. I don't know. Um, maybe other municipalities it's fully subsidized. I don't know. Um, you know, as I could use a comparator of, you know, or, you know, we have a fantastic gym and it's very reasonable compared to a private gym. We pretty much subsidize that cost comparatively. There's a lot of different variables to that. Um, I want to be able to set those expectations on, on, on that, but how we set that is what those details need to be. And um, again, we have this opportunity with modernization. I'm sure that, you know, Richmond Hill is a very big town. They do full clearance, completely not a comparable. I did send a, a, a link to um, uh, my colleagues just now, and I know I've included it with you, Mr. Downey, that did outline five municipalities in York region alone. Um, uh, points to all the applications and the types of removal service that they have all on the click. So um, perhaps hopefully other regions like Halton or Durham maybe have something similar to kind of um, to pull from. Um, as far as pot property taxes, I'm, I'm sure it's great to have that analyzation to see what it would mean to everybody on their property taxes. Maybe it only amounts to 20 bucks per person. Um, I, you know, I am not looking to uh, make this a cost that's going to be, um, you know, egregious for people or onerous for people, hence why I'm looking at also or requesting to look at more subsidized things. Um, but just a quick comment about as far as some people may not want to pay, it's like I could say the same thing about public education. I could say the same things about, uh, you know, uh, yard maintenance or, or so forth. So there's lots of reasons why that, you know, at the end of the day, we're a community and we look after one another. And uh, sometimes when you get to that age, this is the time when you need help and the community needs to get together and recognize that. Um, I really hope that when this does come back, yeah, I want to see some future budget implications. I want to see if there's any piloting options. I want to see if, um, you know, options one, two, three, and, and what that looks like. And the sooner we get it, the better, but I certainly don't want to necessarily rush something if we don't have all the right information. I think people will understand, but I do think this is something we need to do for people in the community. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Uh, before I call the vote, um, as was mentioned, it was done in 2008, and I believe it was former Councillor Stephen Granger that put forward the motion um, at the time, and it was with a full cost recovery of $70, and that was back in 2008, $70 um, for cost recovery. Um, it would be great to get some more information as far as what happened with that pilot and the overall, uh, and I guess, end results uh, to that, because obviously it's quite clear 
we're not doing it anymore. So obviously it did something, something there that didn't work, but obviously we, we need to learn from what we did in the past. Um, if I just go through, I can tell you guys that uh, the town's been talking about whether it's just snow clearing in general, whether it's snow clearing at sidewalks, whether it's windrows since 1977. In 1977, 1979, there was a motion. 1980, there was a motion. 1984, 1989. Um, this is one of those topics I think that uh, we constantly see on a on a on a term by term basis, and it's one I think that a conversation that we need to have. And so I'm thankful that we're going to see a report and uh, we can have this conversation again to see if you know have has technology changed? Has has uh, you know are there more improvements that maybe we can actually implement a, a system that will work well for our town and for our residents that need it the most? So all of those things, I think it's great that we get a report. Um, you know, ultimately, I think some of the things that I would look at in that report too is our our, our business is going to be included on that. So when we plow Young Street, are we going to be doing the windrows there as well on Industrial Parkway? I think those are things that we need to answer as well. Um, you know, things on regional roads. We'll be doing windrows on regional roads. Um, so there's, I think there's a lot of questions that need to be answered, and that's why we do need this report. But I will remind everyone, we always say that we always are looking to provide the best possible service to our residents for the best possible price. So it's not just about the price. And I think that Councillor Thompson touched on it. We need to make sure that we're providing the best service to our residents and that we're, we're not providing a service that is, um, you know, that is set up to fail uh, from the beginning. So I'm looking forward to seeing that report. I think there's a lot of questions that have been thrown at Mr. Downey to provide within that report. And I think we're all looking forward to it. And the sooner, obviously, the better. No pressure, Mr. Downey. But the, the sooner we can get that report, I think the, the longer uh, deep dive conversation that council can have in this matter. And then we can look at uh, having a, a solution to this going into the 2024 uh, budget. So um, that I'll call the vote. That carries. Thank you, gentlemen. You're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the evening. <laughs> but I'll leave that up to you guys. Thank you for coming, though, this evening. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, stay, honestly. We got coffee in the back. <laughs> Have a good evening. Council, I'm going to move to 8.1. Point two, uh, Council Gallo, you pulled this one. This is the committee structure. Uh, is there, is this one of the ones you want something specific out of it? No, this one's fine, right? This is not minutes. No, yeah. yeah, this one's fine. Councilor Gallo, yes. Did you? I just wanted to, I have, I have two, I guess, amendments that I wanted to put on the floor. The first one is um, that Council add a traffic safety and active transportation committee. Uh, and change the name of the Community Advisory Committee to Parks and Recreation Committee. Okay. I had previously mentioned yep. in GC that I... Uh, He's moving. Okay. I need you to move the GC so recommendation. So I, you moved, seconder, Councillor Gilliland, and then I got an amendment on the floor, moved by Councillor Gallo, seconded by Councillor Gardner. Okay. Now we're good? to establish a traffic uh, safety advisory and active transportation committee, as well as changing the name of community uh, advisory committee back to Parks and Rec. Councilor Gallo, Councilor Gillen for the, the original and the amendment is Councilor Gallo, Councilor Gardner. Correct, we're good? Yep. Okay, did you wanna make a comment? Uh, on? Um, just, just on a kind of a side note, but I think if this does pass, we have to establish who's going to be on. on uh, you've committee. already said no. We don't need to establish. And, that, and that's it. fine. And 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 I don't mind having the fourth committee. Um, <laughs> acknowledging some only have two, but I'm happy to 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 commit to that. Um, if it's a four year term, I, we might have a discussion. Um, two. And that's fine. Unless we change it, but yeah. yeah. Okay. I I mean, when we get to 
when we get to ours that on, on the regular agenda, if someone else wants to maybe say that they would prefer to, then we can always look at that. But as of now, it's probably you, Councillor. Well, okay. Any other comments or questions on the amendment? Councillor Thompson. Thank you. You know, I certainly like the idea of establishing the traffic and safety one. I just, I just want to understand the rationale for changing the community advisory committee back to the former name of Parks and Rec. Perhaps, Councillor Gallo, can I, if you want, I can expand on that if you want, Councillor. Yeah, yeah. We so Councillor Councillor Gallo and I had a little bit of a conversation when he mentioned that he wanted to add this committee. Um, if you recall, Councillor Thompson, when we created the community advisory committee, it was putting together the trails and the Parks and Rec. And then we said that they would also start to deal with traffic on occasion. So now that we're moving traffic and essentially trails as part of active, tra active transportation back out, well, then there's no real use of having it called community advisory. We might as well put it back to parks and rec. And that's that's the rationale. Thank you. And so um, having been on council for a little bit of time, I can assume then that the parks and rec committee will be the same term of reference that it was previously? I would, Mr. Clerk. <laughs> I need you to answer that one. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, it's it, right now we have the, there's terms of reference in front of council this evening, the, com the community advisory committee terms reference. They'd be pretty close to the, um, to the, uh, the parks and rec advisory committee minutes or terms of reference from years past. Um, but we can look at it. Uh, if council wants to refer those back to staff, we can bring them next month. I just want to get a sense of what I'm voting on. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. And Councilor, what I'll say is, and, I, and I'm looking a little ahead um, with the creation of of, of, uh, of a new committee, there'd be terms of reference that will be coming to us uh, at the next GC, most likely. Uh, so we could also add in some changes to the terms of reference because it's a new new structure to that name. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we haven't had a traffic safety advisory committee for 12 years, although some of us have tried. Um, Councillor Gallo, I remember Councillor West sitting over here and taking on that committee with quite a good nature. It's going to be a difficult committee, and I thank I thank you very very much for bringing that forward and for volunteering. And I was to say, I'm assuming you're 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 not volunteering to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not volunteering at the moment. Okay. But um, I don't really think it's fair for one councillor to have that committee for four years. And we, we will switch after two years, which we did last term as well. And I, yeah. and we did it last term. And that was the that was essentially the the policy, I guess, or or the approach that we took uh, starting from 2018 was that we would we would switch up because it's good for I think for everyone sitting at this table to have a little bit of knowledge in each of the different uh, committees. Thank you. And I might even suggest that. We do it in a one-year term. Like it's going, there's going to be a lot of emotion in that committee. Anyway, um, Councillor Gallo has it to begin with, and we'll see how it goes. Perfect. Councillor Weiss, to the amendment. I just want to second this. I think it's a great idea to separate that out. I think the active transportation is uh, very important for us. We have people already interested in participating in this, and if you need some help with that uh, committee, I'd be happy to sit on that with you. Thank you. Councilor Garner, second. I'd just like to mention that the Environmental Advisory Committee got rolled into that, and then Councilor Gilland uh, took it out to be its own committee. So it was quite a jumble of mm -hmm. subjects to begin with. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gallant, to the amendment. Um, just, just I think in terms of the last traffic safety advisory committee, uh, I, I was on it, um, so it would have been after Councillor West, maybe maybe six or seven years ago. So I, it I was on it, and we sat in here. And yeah, I think it was. I think it was in the two thousand and six term. You guys still had it, I believe. Yeah. Yes. I, I recall yeah. being on the last one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll call the vote on the amendment.
Nope, oh, that carries. It's back to the main motion as amended. Any other comments on the main motion, Councilor Gallo? Yeah, still, you're still. Thank you. I, I just a second um, amendment, and it is that we, as we've been, as we've discussed before, that we establish a governance committee to review council remuneration in 2023. Okay. Seconder, Councilor Gillen. Any comments? None. Councilor Thompson. Um. The actual past practice was to form the council compensation ad hoc committee. During my first term of council, that's what we established, and there, you can go back and look at the reports. The governance committee, which I brought forward as a motion, was really to look at how we govern. The mandate of that committee was more to look at things like how many people sat on councils. If you remember long enough, there used to be nine around this table. We reduced it to seven. Yeah, in addition, it was to look at at large versus wards. It was more to look at governance issues. The my understanding is that what's being asked is really just to focus the topic on compensation. In which case, let's follow past practice and just adopt the council compensation ad hoc committee, which was always the practice. So, you know, my preference is to call it that. Yeah, fine. Compensation. Compensation? Yep. Uh, friendly. Yes. Yeah. In 23. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Council Gardner? Uh, I agree with Council Thompson. And I would also like to add that we follow past practice of an outgoing committee reviewing the compensation for the incoming committee, which we didn't do this past year. I'm not sure why, but I don't like the idea. I mean, I think it's a better idea to have one council review what would be happening to a future council. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, council, council, could you state, state that again? Well, thank you. Oh, your mic was on. Yeah, just give it one sec. It'll be on in a sec. There you go. Councillor Thompson was ta was talking about um, past process or tradition or whatever. Um, and I don't know, but it fell through the cracks that in the last council, we didn't do a review for the incoming council. So let's let's just keep that practice up as well with the ad, uh, an ad hoc committee. So you want the ad hoc committee to be looking at? I uh, know it needs to be looking. We we missed an opportunity last term, so it needs to be looking at it now. But um, the process should be for as this council leaves, we should then be looking at compensation for the next council. Okay, and I'll, I'll take that into consideration, but I mean, I think we'll deal with that if once the terms of reference would come to us. That sounds more of a terms of reference okay. type of thing. Thank you. Instead of just creating, this is just to establish it. Thank and you. Then we'll look at uh, thank you. Just a general comment. I, I think I think that's something we would deal with in the terms of reference. Okay? Yeah. 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 So yeah. when would this be? When would this be happening? Uh, as I mentioned, we'll probably get terms of reference. Uh, I would assume next February 21st, GC. Staff will put a report with terms of reference for us to approve those terms of reference. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, uh, just in terms of the terms of reference, is that for um, all of the committees? We have some for, we're changing some. We already have terms of reference and they're really high level anyway. I mean, there's not a lot of detail in the terms yeah. of reference for any of the committees. Um, are we saying the terms of reference will come back for the trails and active transportation uh, as well as this committee, but the other ones we're leaving as is? Yes, Mr. Clark. Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. Our intention is to bring the terms for the, the active transportation and traffic safety committee on February 7th, and then um, the, comp the council compensation ad hoc committee on February the 21st. So both are, are um, approved by council in February. And then would, be, then would be ratified at council at the end of the month. I don't have an issue with the um 
not governance, whatever name came up. Um, I do have an issue with the other one because I, I assume we're not going to wait until th those terms of reference are established. We're going to go out for all the other committees to look for for um, volunteers at the same time. Um, it's so, not that difficult for us to to right now establish term of reference for that new committee that, so that we can, unless the intent is to wait to publicize to the public um, who wants to be on these committees until that that particular committee is is the terms of reference are established. So it doesn't seem to be efficient. I, I would say we could probably quickly establish those terms of reference right now for that specific committee because like I said, if you read them, they're very high level. Um, the governance one that that, that can wait. So Councillor, I, I mean Mr. Clerk, you can say if I'm wrong, but uh, what I'd say, first of all, we're straying a little, a little bit, but um, it's okay because I, I know we need to get an understanding of, of what's going to happen. Um, we, I think, with the active transportation and the traffic safety advisory committee, I don't think we necessarily need to uh, wait to maybe put out the call because because the term reference are very similar as Councilor Allen mentioned. So we can actually put out the call without actually approving the terms of reference because we have an understanding, as you said, that they're very generic. They're they're at a high level, so that's going to be the same. The other one, yes, it's a different story. So I agree with you. So it not having the terms of reference tonight and having them in thing is not going to preclude us from being able to go out for that specific committee with everyone, every other committee for the call. And, and that's Mr. Clark, that's if you want to add in or yeah. tell me I'm wrong. Or no, I, I'm not three of us. Don't want to tell you wrong. Uh, I agree with you. I um, agree with Councilor Gallo said. We, our intent is to recruit for both committee so i think you're you're correct the, the terms reference are very high level on uh, the one and then for the council compensation ad hoc committee i think it's pretty self-explanatory i think people uh, members from the community would know what they're getting themselves into by um applying for that committee so our intent is to go out by the end of this week for all committees including the two being go. established tonight perfect. So there you go Councilor. perfect thank you and ultimately when they have that first meeting they'll they'll go through the terms of reference and have a full understanding of what they need to be able to do okay so on the amendment i'll call the vote That carries. Back to the main motion as amended. Are there any other amendments? Councillor Gallo, you still have the floor. You're good. Any other amendments? Councillor Gilliland. Thank you. Um, it's more or less the way it's being voted. Um, item number seven, um, in terms for the, the two years for the citizens, I'm still of the mindset that um, I feel like as a citizen applying that, you know, sometimes it takes you a couple of years to just kind of get a groove of what you're doing and what you're understanding within that committee. And you can lose that momentum and having a blanket change or for two years, um, I think can be um, presumptive, um, especially with some committees like committee adjustment, property standards, there's a lot of learning curve. Um, the heritage committee, you know, understanding that huge document and how you rate things Again, big, huge learning curves. Um, accessibility, same thing, was a learning curve for me. Um, so I can only imagine when we're turning over once again, um, perhaps maybe in you know some other committees like maybe Parks and Rec's pretty self-explanatory and whatnot. But again, it's just getting in that groove and really understanding your, your place and where you're contributing. I think if uh, something were circumstantial and you, know, you needed to step away from that committee for whatever reason. We've had vacancies come up um, various times on various different committees. There's doesn't mean that there's no option that you could step away and there's other opportunities for other people, but to just kind of blanket, make everybody apply. I just think that it can cause disruption that doesn't really necessarily need to happen. So um, for that, I would just really prefer to have some consistency at least, especially if we are looking at council changing in two years to kind of move around. I just think having a consistent committee for those four years uh, would be much more helpful. So having said that, I'd like to separate that part for the vote. Okay. Councillor Gardner. Just for clarity, we wouldn't force members. No. So if somebody, so the idea was that somebody knows that it's a two-year term, we might get um, more participation, but if somebody wants to go back on the committee, 
or stay on the committee. I think, no, that ultimately it is this council's decision who stays, who goes. If we want to change, if new applicants come in and we want to appoint them, we can appoint them. If we want to keep the exact uh, members, we would keep the exact members. It's up to us sitting here at the table. Thank you. Well, I, I think if somebody expresses interest to stay on a committee, unless they're a troublemaker. These are the conversations that I'm assuming we would have uh, during those discussions. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Thank you. You know, I think Councillor Gillen raises a fair point. You know, some committees, yes, there is a steeper learning curve, but as was just stated by Councillor Gardner, this doesn't preclude anybody from serving out four years. It just means that um, council will make a decision whether to continue on with the same people or perhaps introduce new people to get um, more people engaged in, in committees and, and how the town functions. So it gives us the best of both worlds. And so, um, I, you know, I, I'm supportive of, of uh, continuing uh, putting this into place in terms of a practice of, of the term of being only two years. But again, I think there will be some committees where council will look and think that in the best interest of all that it will continue on and extend those people for a full four years. But in other cases, we may say as a collective group that it's great. There's lots more people interested. Let's get more people engaged and involved and um, bring on some new people and keep some other people with regards to committees. So uh, I'm comfortable with the two-year term proposition. Thank you. Anybody, any other comments, questions? Okay, we're going to vote on everything except for seven. I have to ask. Do you want 11 to be separate? Can we do 11 separate as well, Linda? Thank you. Okay, call the vote. That carries, we'll do number seven. Call the vote. That carries, and we'll do number 11. That carries. Okay, Council 8.1.3, Council Gardner, you pulled this one. Would you like to move the recommendation out of committee? Oh, thank you. No? Move it. Council Thompson, second. Council Gillen. Council Gardner, floor shores. I'm, I'm just going to, Council Gardner, and I know you're, you're going to be good about this, but uh, new information. Let's not rehash the entire discussion that we had in committee is to receive information. Yes. So I have a further motion that I would like to- You'd like an amendment. Okay. An amendment. Sure. Okay. That I believe the clerk has. You have it. It's gonna require a bit. So can you put it, if you put it up on my screen, I'll read it if you'd like, or you can read it. Or yeah. Be easier for- Did you want me to read it for you, Councilor Gardner? Or did you want to read it? No, I was hoping that people could see it. And it 
everyone will see it, but I'm just saying, did you want me to read it as well so everyone can hear it? Or do you just leave it? That's fine. It's up to you. I think not. I'll leave it up to you, Councilor. Oh, I appreciate you offering. Yeah. So um, I'd just like to say we have a report from the 17th of January. That was very good. Thank you, Ms. Ramuno. Um, I, I would like to, um, and some of this was discussed at the meeting, but um, there are 16 outstanding complaints about secondary suites. Um, uh, okay, I can. What's wrong? It's not, a, okay. I'd like to have a timeline uh, to resolve those. And um, I mean, I have spoken with Mr. Muno. So a bullet point is missing, so I'll have to read it unless you can bring it down, Linda. So, Councillor, I'll, I'll read it just so I can tell you what's in front of me, which is, I mean, obviously it's maybe too long to show on the screen all at once, but well, I have that staff report back with the following details. Timeline to resolve the outstanding 16 complaints regarding secondary suites. A procedure to notify the owner of a dwelling when an inspection to their secondary unit is required and an explanation as to why the online second unit housing list is inconsistent with the January 17th report chart, page five. The addresses and initial date of the current open permits, including a timeline on closing the permits, and that the updated procedure include provisions that if the owner fails to respond to the town's inspection request within 30 days, that a written letter be sent. And if the owner continues to fail to respond within a further 30 days that further recourse may be used. Is that the entire? That's it. That's that's exactly what's there. That's You're it. just it's just short there, so it's not Thank showing. You. Um, uh, with respect to the first part of the motion, Mr. Muno, there are 16 units outstanding. Uh, most of them have been outstanding for a while, so. Um, it wouldn't be difficult to put together a timeline to get that done. Mr. Ramono, I see you nodding yes. Is just yes, yes, Council. And the other the other part of this of our report from the 17th was um the open building permits. And of those, they I believe there are 45. So um what I'm looking for is um action items, timelines, just strategies of how we're going to do this, because this has been a very difficult problem for a long time. So you're nodding that's all doable. Yes. Um, oh, sorry, just one second here. Did, I'm, and I, I apologize that clerk's asking me if I had a seconder and I forget. So did I have a seconder? Councillor Gilliland? Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, Councillor Gardner. I just needed to make sure. For is there is there anything... Uh, problematic to you in this motion, Mr. Muno? Mr. Ramono? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had a chance to uh, speak with uh, Council Gardner earlier, and I've seen the motion. So we'll do our best to uh, try and close as many of these files as we can. So we'll report back as soon as we can. We may not be able to close all those files within a short window of time, but we'll, I'll be meeting with the uh, CBO tomorrow and his team, and we'll develop a strategy to uh, attack as many of these as we can and report back uh, in a timely manner. Thank and you. Now, sir. Thank you. Uh, when when do you think you could bring this back? I mean, maybe it may have to be come back in stages, but when do you think that you could bring hopefully these bullet points back to council? Mr. Romano? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I think we could provide a, an update over the next, uh, you know, within within two months. That would be great. Thank you. Councillor. Um, I have some questions. Um, we had, I think, 157 complaints since 2013. And most of those were considered, I guess, to be invalid. So um, 
would you be able to, or would Mr. Jean be able to give us a, a list of what, you know, why a complaint would be invalid? Like if it, you know, if it was because there were too many cars parked on the property, that was, you know. Can, Councilor, I'm going to should pull back because that doesn't seem like it's part of the amendment, but that's Mr. Romano. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so then I can speak this to the main motion. After the amendment. Okay. Yes. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Thompson to the amendment. Yeah, certainly just to the amendment. I mean, first glance, it looks substantive. So Mr. Ramono touched upon it, but I guess my question for you to Mr. Ramono, Mr. Ramono, just in more detail, any any concerns or um, pitfalls that council should be aware of that, that could come out of this report? Um, you know, typically something of this standard, I'd like to touch base with, with the various directors. I, I don't know if there's a, um, whether uh, Ms. Van Leeuwen or Ms. Desario also has comments with regard to it. So perhaps I can ask each one of them whether or not there are any concerns with uh, this report or some of the, the things being asked. So start with Mr. Ramuno. Mr. Ramuno. Certainly through you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, in, in this first report, we did ide identify, you know, a strategy as to how we were going to deal with some of these outstanding permits um, um, and where we were going to, you know, uh, develop a strategy uh, education program as well. We prepared a guideline as well for um, a residence or a residence or property owners coming in uh, for with permit application for, for second suites, just so that's codified. They know what the expectations are. Um, I think the challenge has been with the, uh, the number of complaints or the uh, uh, outstanding permits that are, still aren't closed as has been in the past. Um, not being able to get uh, authorization to, you know, enter the uh, uh, the suite, uh, but I think we need to just uh, mobilize our forces and uh, and what I've talked to our solicitors well, try and use you know other methods to ensure that we do get in um, and and try as often as we can. There's no guarantees that we are good within two or even six months we're going to have all these files closed or these permits closed, but we'll. Uh, We'll uh, mobilize our forces to do uh, as much as we can with respect to closing as many permits as we can within the, within the next few months. Yeah, but again, the challenge has been, you know, we can't always uh, gain entry into a uh, into a property. Thank you. Uh, so I guess, Ms. Desario, same question. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I've been um, privy to all the discussions that have been occurring today, and I did see this motion ahead of time. So as it's written, I have no concerns from a legal standpoint. Ms. Van Lauren, same, same. Councillor? Thank you. Very much appreciate that. Thank you. Councillor Gallo? Uh, I, I was going to ask the same same questions, particularly from our, our legal department. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Weiss? Perhaps this was uh, answered by Mrs. Mr. Serio, but <clears throat> with the the last phrase there that further recourse may be used. Um, do you have an idea of what recourse would mean in this regard, since knowing we've had difficulties with access to uh, these places? Mr. Desario? Through you, Mr. Mayor, the recourse would be what's, uh, what is permissible under the Building Code Act, and that would be obtaining a search warrant. Okay. Councilor? Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Comments, questions on the amendment? Call the vote on the amendment. That carries. Councilor Gardner, floor still yours on the main motion as amended. So um, perhaps a list of the most common reasons or maybe the reasons from the last five years where um, complaints are considered not valid. I'm sure it's pretty uniform. Um, also, if uh, somebody makes a complaint, are they informed about the result? Like if, it, if it's not a valid complaint, are they informed? Mr. Ramuno? To you, Mr. Mayor, my understanding is we do follow up with the complainant with respect to uh, whether the matter has been resolved and uh, what transpired and what 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 the results of our investigation were. Yes. Councillor? Thank you. I then 
a couple of people I spoke to have been missed. So could you make sure there's consistency in that process, please? Um, the report mentions an online portal. I, I don't I don't want to cause, I mean, I wouldn't want Mr. Sean and staff to have extra work. I think the the uh, online list, I think it's called the two unit suite. Anyway, it's online. It's been online for quite a few years. So it, I think it'd be more productive just to um, communicate how it can be accessed. That would be the first thing. And the second thing would be, um, as it says in the report, that Mr. Jean is intending to update it every time um, a, a complaint is added. I think that would be quite an easy thing to do. And also, I'd like to suggest I did try and get the online list for you on the screen, but I can't do it. Um, there's a column in there um, that says uh, inspection date. I think that would be more productive to say final inspection date. So we know that the permit has been finalized. And also since 2014, um, a registration and a permit is actually the same thing. So uh, in that column that's talking about, we do registration slash permit because it means the same thing, but it, it's confusing because it's in two different columns. Thank you. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Muno. Thank you. Or Jean. Jean. What do you call him, Mr. Muno? I call, Bill call, I call him Bill Jean. Bill Jean. <laughs> okay, so it is Councillor Gillette. That's what I'll call him. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Call the vote. That carries 8.1.6. Councillor Thompson, you pulled this one. Okay, second. Councillor Gillan. Councillor Gallo. Uh, just a sense of timing from, from staff in terms of when we would receive something back. Ms. McDougall. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. I believe. Um, at the time we, we mentioned this or spoke, we would probably anticipate a spring Q2 report coming back to council with some information. Councilor, good. Any other comments, questions? Call the vote. That carries. Uh, 8.2.3. This is, um, Councillor Weiss, you pulled us the budget committee meeting report of January 16. Did you have a specific item within those minutes? 6.1.4. Clerk. Councillor, did you want to make a change to it? If you wanted to make a change, then we would do it during the final budget report. That's what the clerk's saying to me instead of doing it under the minutes. It's listed as uh, tentatively approved. So before we go to being approved, I want to have some conversation about it. So you tell me where it belongs. Sweet. I'll be happy to uh, defer this to our next council meeting no. if that's- uh, No, we'd, we would deal with it under 9.1 is what the clerk is recommending. Fair enough. Okay. So if you want, I'll come back to you under 9.1. You can say, I want to I speak specifically to the Aurora Sports Hall of Fame 
tentatively approved item. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 8.2, oh yes, sorry, we need to vote. I apologize, we did have it. I did pull it, so I do need uh, just, I got moved by Councillor Wee, second by Councillor Gardner, a call a vote. That carries. 8.2.4, Councilor Gallo. Thank you. Um, I wanted to introduce a, a motion as well. I think the clerk has. At the final, under 9.1 as well. Is okay. it the one that I'm, the one that I know of as well that, you, that you're gonna be introducing? Yes. Yeah, yeah under 9.1. Okay. That would fit under 9.1. So I, can I get, Councilor Gallo, can I get you to move this? Just move it, essentially, and can I get someone to second it? Councilor Gallo, thank you. Councilor Thompson, did you want to say something on this? Yes, I'd, I'd like to ask that uh, 6.1.3 be voted on separately. Mr. Clerk, it's not changing, we're just voting. That's what you, it's not part of the budget. Okay. Okay, this is very confusing. So we're here, we're gonna get so councillor yours, 9.1. We're gonna you're gonna you're gonna add and make an amendment under 9.1, which is the final budget approval item. Okay. Councillor Weiss, your item, same thing, 9.1 under budget final budget approval, because you're looking at making a change or expand that discussion because it's tentatively approved under 9.1. So Thompson, my understanding is you just want to have a vote on pull a separate item out of that and have a vote on it so it's recorded in the is that is that my understanding now? Yes. Excluding 6.1, it's just that. Just that. Okay. So we're doing this first. Excluding 6.1. This one. So we're doing this, excluding 6.1. So everyone understand what we're doing right now? And then we're gonna vote on 6.1 separately. We get it? Don't, don't worry, I, I know what everybody wants and we're on the right path, okay? <laughs> so. Pardon? They just wants to vote on the record. The councilor wants to vote on the record. That's all. Nothing's being changed. It's just for the vote to be on the record. So we're doing the budget committee meeting report of January 23, 2023, excluding 6.1. Okay. It's on the screen. All right. I call a vote on this one. Councilor Thompson? Uh, nothing popped up. Are you on the item? Let's hit the red. Hit the red thing. There you oh, go. There you go. That carries. All right. Now we're going to do item 6.1. Can you split one and two and three? Mr. Clark? Yeah. One, Councilor? Yep. One, two together, three separate. Yep. Okay. Let me just get it on the screen first and then. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we speak, Councillor Garner? Go ahead. I, I would just like to um, hear what Councillor Thompson has to say about it. Nothing? He just wants to vote. Okay. Okay. Councillor Gillette? Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. It just kind of dawned on me in the language used in the, the, the second uh, clause. 
Is the finance advisory committee, they're, 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 they're helping develop it, but is that something that's set in stone or is this coming back to council for approval? Always comes back to council. Okay, that's, I just want to know that, thanks. Thank you. You got that, Mr. Clerk? Thank you. All right. So I'm assuming what we're going to see on our screen right screen right now is number one and two. All right. I'll call the vote. That carries. Number three. We had it there. No, there it is. All right. Call the vote. That carries. Okay. Nine point one. Final, final budget approval. Um, the recommendation is that report number FIN 23-005 be received. Two, that council approve the 2023 operating budget as follows. A, the operating budget as amended by this report and as summarized in attachment one. B, that water, wastewater and stormwater rates to fully fund each of these services as summarized in table two. C, that the tax and water billing bylaws be enacted at a future council meeting. Three, that council approve the 2023 capital budget as follows. A, the capital budget authority and plan spending by project as detailed in the budget binder table on December 13, 2022 and is amended in this report and as summarized in attachments two and three. B, the capital budget authority and plan spending for the roads, facilities, fleet, information, technology services, and storm sewer asset management capital programs is summarized in table four and subject to the rules detailed in this report. C, the funding sources for each capital project as reviewed and recommended by budget committee on January 14th, 2023. D, the conditional, conditionally approved projects be added to the pending list. Four, that the list of council identified requests in, included in table five be endorsed. Five, that the reconciliation of the 2023 operating budget to the full accrual basis of accounting as required under Ontario Regulation 20, uh, 28409 as summarized in attachment four be endorsed. Councillor Thompson, you want to move that? Thank you, seconder. Councillor Kim, comments or questions? I'll start, I'll start with you. Yeah, Councillor Gallo. And then I'll go to Councillor. Just a, uh, a recommendation to add to, um, to the budget. Okay. And staff has the motion. We get that up on the screen. Councillor Gallo, I'm assuming you're moving that? Yep. I Good. guess seconder. Councillor Gillen, 
Mr. Gallo, go ahead. So it's it's that uh, that one thousand dollars from the council contingency fund be allocated to award budget for each councilor in twenty twenty three, and that the CEO uh, be the approval authority for all expenses. Um, it's just as we've described during the budget process, just to have a um, some funds there for each councilor. And by the way, we're going to be establishing a a policy through the uh, finance advisory committee on how going forward how to deal with uh, with this, but in the interim to have some funds there to spend within the ward. Um, for you know whatever the councillor feels is necessary uh, within that that ward, and uh, to have the oversight of the CAO um, in that spending. Thank you. Any comments or questions on the amendment, Councillor Weiss? Uh, yes, I'm in favor of this. Uh, I recently made a request for a room and other types of things for a ward one meeting, and uh, I was told there was no budget for this type of thing, so. I think this will be helpful for us to um, move some of the items from each of the wards and the residents uh, forward to council and back out. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Councillor, actually, Councillor Thompson, before I go to you, um, let me just pop them in. When I'm reading this, I think, Councillor, I think maybe we just need to clarify within this that it is in a total of 6,000 split between each member for a thousand for each member. So maybe it's that 6,000 from the council contingency fund be allocated to the ward budget for each councillor in an amount of a thousand each or something like that. Just so that we have a full understanding of how much is, I, I get it, but just, yeah. Yeah, is that, so can we work on that while, while we keep speaking? That we, we identify that it's 6,000 in total from the council contingency fund okay. and that each councillor would be getting a thousand. Okay. So if you can just work on that while we continue speaking. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Thank you. Following up on Councillor Weiss's comment, uh, through you to Mrs. Wainwright Van Kessel, it's my understanding that each councillor already has a small budget through the line item of special functions. There's $6,000 in total uh, allocated in the budget, and there's roughly $450 allocated for each councillor out of that amount, the rest going to the mayor. Um, what is the purpose for that special functions and what can each councillor draw on up to that 450? Ms. Wainwright Van Kessel. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So the budget, the way it exists right now is consolidated under the mayor and council. So notionally there is essentially an amount per council member, um, but it is council's choice as a whole as how that is used. Okay. Council. But to Councillor Weiss's point, he had asked about booking a room and was told there's no budget, but yet there is money set aside in, in this special function uh, line item that could not a councillor have used part of that to pay for, be it a ticket, be it an event, or be it booking a room? Ms. Mayor Van Kessel? Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, it, it could be used for something such as that. Councillor? So then it's my assumption then that the this amendment so this $1,000 is in addition to that money that's already allocated for each councillor. So uh, perhaps through you to uh, Councillor Gallo, just to confirm that um, this is over and above the 3,200 each councillor has for conferences, over and above the $450 for special functions as allocated in the current budget. Councillor Gallo. One sec, it's on now. Uh, um, it, it is, to be quite honest. It's news to me about the 450. I've never used it. Um, didn't even know it was there. I thought maybe it was a, a consolidated thing. Um, but it is definitely in, uh, above the um, the conferences. As the mayor had mentioned last time, that's not part of, of, of what's being proposed, uh, proposed here. Councillor? One sec, Councillor. It's just because this one's off, so they're having to over on that side. Turn on your mic. Oh, well, yours is off too. Did you push? Can you push the button, Councillor? There you go. Thank go you. Um, I think the only I think the only other comment, and and uh, I'm fine with this, is a couple things. One is because we don't we do have a policy in place, and so I think that this should still align with our existing policy. So. Uh, policy 57 says that any expenses of members of council needs to be approved by the mayor and treasurer. Um, so 
um, the second component of this amendment is in conflict with that. So I don't know if, if council wants to amend it and, and say that it should be approved by the mayor and treasurer as per our, our current policy, or maybe it's the mayor and CAO, or are we asking to do away with that policy and put this in, in place? Uh, my preference would be perhaps to just to be consistent with our existing policy that the mayor and CEO be the approval authority for all expenses, uh, or just stick with policy 57, which is the mayor and the treasurer. Um, secondly, in that policy, it also speaks to um, the importance that you know all expenses of members of, of council uh, be publicly recorded. And so uh, I'd like to see that if this amendment carries a second amendment, that states that there will be an itemized list of those expenses of that how that thousand dollars is spent as part of the council remuneration report that is published semi annually on the website. I just think that since we don't have a policy that outlines what can be spent for, just in the interest of openness and transparency, that it should be itemized and listed on our website so that the public knows how those funds were used. Okay. We'll, we'll wait a sec. I'll go. Let, let's all speak, and then I'll I'll come back to whatever we want to do. We might even do it as a friendly. I don't know yet. Uh, I'll, we'll figure that out as we go along. Councilor Garner, you wanted to speak. So my understanding was um, the special function budget was mostly if we wanted to support different charitable events. Um, so I guess that would be included in that special function budget. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to Ms. Wayne White Van Kessel. Ms. Wayne White Van Kessel. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So it is set up for uses in the past where council has attended different events. It could be used for various things as long as it fits within the overall item for that line item. Um, that's why we're recommending with moving forward with a policy associated with these ward budgets so we know what should be included there versus other places. I think traditionally, Councillor, the 450 was. Um, used for if there was a, I guess, tickets, you know, when we, uh, sometimes when Betty reaches out to each of you and says that there's an event occurring, whether it's like Lake Simcoe AGM or something like that, or they're okay, having that's their, right, yeah, okay. and where, or the chamber event, stuff like that, that there's a, there's a ticket price to it. That's traditionally where it came out of. Thank you. So um, I uh, am rather old fashioned in that I use a day timer and every year, the town buys me a day timer. Where would that something like that come out of? That just comes out of office supplies. That's okay. a very minimal thing. So yeah. But if if I guess that's it what is. would come out of this. I I don't know what that's why we need to create a policy, correct? Okay. And uh, the last question is for you to Councillor Gallo. Um how did you come up with the, the amount of a thousand dollars? Councillor Gallo. I know you, the two of us had a discussion, but if you want to it elaborate. It was uh, recommended by the mayor um, <laughs> and the funding source also, I think in discussion with the CAO. Yes. Um, and and I, I, I have no issues with, with what Councillor uh, Thompson said in terms of um, it being uh, public. Absolutely, it should be. Thank you. Is that any other comments, questions? So, Mr. Clerk, what do you... Oh, Councillor Thompson, did you want to speak a second now? Um, I guess my question really is to Councillor Gallo and, and Councillor Gillen whether they would be open to a friendly amendment to change the second uh, component of the amendment to align with policy 57 and that either be the mayor and CAO or the mayor and treasurer uh, be the approval authority for all expenses. If not, that's, that's fine. That's the, their choice. It's their amendment, in which case I would ask that it be separated. Councillor Gallo? I, I'd like to leave it the way the way it is. Um, I, I think it should be left within uh, staff's hands. And if there's a policy out there, perhaps that should also uh, change. Okay. Thompson, did you want that that other one about? Um... But if it's friendly, I can just add it on. That's why I'm saying I think I think Councillor Gallo mentioned that yeah, absolutely. And if it's a friendly one, then we can just put it on instead of having to do a totally separate vote. So Councillor Gallo, as far as uh, uh, a detailed uh, itemized report uh, with that would be included as part of our, our remunerate compensation report. How's that? I'll just use that word because <laughs> I'm tongue tied right now. Councillor Gillen, you seconded. You okay with that? 
the detailed report itemized? Yeah, so I'm just asking you if you're okay for me to add a friendly amendment. That's fine. Okay, so we can add that. Uh, Mr. Clark, you got that? Okay, I got Councillor Kim, and if you want to speak, please push. Thank you, Councillor Kim. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this may be just slightly off from from the amendment on line item two, but why is policy fifty fifty seven um, had to be signed off by the mayor? another elected official and the treasurer, as opposed to two bureaucrats, like the CAO or the treasurer. I'm just curious about that. What was the logic behind that? Ms. Ms. Mayor McCastle, do we even know when that was created? Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's a very old policy. Uh, we're planning on putting on the list for FAC review during this term. It's, uh, it's a old, very old policy that's out there. 2013. So I can I can tell you, Councillor, I approve your if you guys go to the conference, I approve that. Okay. So I guess if you don't like me, you can say no to Councillor Kim. I like all of you. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gillan. Thank you. And just to respect to the uh itemized uh expenses when I and I have no problem you know, publicize and being transparent on what's being spent. But I mean, I look at this uh, um, contingency fund for the ward counselors, which could be booking a room, but it could also be, you know, supplying some coffee for the residents and stuff. So are we expected to, you know, oh, $40 in coffee from XYZ place and, you know, $4 on napkins. Like how itemized are we expected on this uh, report award expense report and uh, what is the expectation that because I don't want to get to the point where it becomes onerous um, versus being somewhat maybe piled into you know, like office supplies or so I, I, I'm just trying to understand because we're talking about you know thousand dollars here and um, I just kind of want to know what that expectation is and how that's being translated or understood are you asking that of Councillor Thompson uh yeah sure uh, Councillor Thompson maybe you could kind of Shed some light on that. What are you looking for exactly? Uh, well, I'm trying to put myself not just in my own shoes, but in the shoes of, of residents. I mean, it's their money at the end of the day. And so I, I think that because we don't have a policy in place and we're moving forward like this, I think until that policy is in place and clearly outlines uh, what can and can't be spent, then yes, you know, provide an itemization. And, and yes, it may be a little onerous, but in lieu of having that policy, I think, again, from a transparency perspective, it's important for people to see what is being spent. Um, you know, hopefully the FAC committee can look at uh, policy 57 and make those kind of revisions, which really, you know, does outline it to some degree. It's a good start. It is a compensation policy for members of public, members of council. Um, and then once that's in place, then we can have a further conversation about what needs to be done going forward. But I don't know, at this point in time, I mean, um, when uh, you submit some receipts to uh, for count conference expenses, it's itemized, everybody sees what's there, that's what gets signed off on. When I'm sure when staff members submit receipts to their report, direct reports, again, you know, you see what it is and you sign off on it, it's the same way. Councilor? Thank you. And I think we kind of already do that now with the budget that we have and that big pot, whether we go to a conference, but it might be simplified special events or conferences or in some generalized buckets. It's just with this, it just seemed kind of like, are we asking, okay, this is like $30 in Tim Horton's coffee. This is $4 in napkins. I just want to have set some expectations here. Otherwise, I'll ask for a report and itemize on anything that we do. We spent $4.50 on nails and, you know, we spent $682 on some lumber. Like, I think we all want to know where our money's being spent. I just don't want to create something onerous. I understand a policy needs to be put in place to simplify it. But how detailed did you want us to be submitting these receipts? At what level? So I mean, I just, I'll go back to you, but I'd say, Councillor, uh, the receipts are every receipt is submitted, and every receipt has a detail on the receipt. And yep. staff have a detailed, essentially detailed itemized, but they just put it in those buckets. I think what Councillor 
Thompson's asking is until the policy is in place, that a that basically that itemized list just be presented and say, here you go, here's the itemized list instead of here's the bucket list, because they're already itemized. Because when you when, when you submit a receipt, they know everyone knows exactly what you spent the funds on. That's fine. So I understand we'll wait for that policy. I rarely submit some receipts anyway, but as we do more award based things, I could see myself, you know, maybe renting a room or maybe printing some papers for an event or, you know, buying some coffee for something. And, uh, you know, I have no problem. It's just that financial breakdown on, you know, I don't see that from other community partners saying, yes, we spent $30 on coffee for this event. It might be bucket under, um, as something a little bit more generalized, but if that is the intent until a policy is in place, that's okay. But I don't want to get to the point where it's so petty that I'm I'm submitting two dollars for some napkins from the dollar store. That's that's just what I'm saying. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Um, I my only two comments would be that um, I I have no problem moving away from. All this 57 and take me out of the equation, but uh, I would be in favor of, of of two people having the authority still. And I think it, if if uh, that's the case, it should be CAO and treasurer. I think there's just a little added comfort level, I think, uh, and assurances to the public um, that it's two people making the approval authority, not just one. Um, it's like normally when you have sign-offs on checks, you usually have two signatures on them. So I think it's very similar to that in any business setting. So um, I think that that's just another, as I mentioned, another level of comfort for, for the residents. So if, if Councillor Gallo, if you're open to adding the treasurer to that, I'm fine with that. And then I'd be able to vote for it. But if it stays the way it is, I would, I'd vote against it. Um, okay. Um, so you're, you're fine with that as a friendly. Thank you. Councillor Gallo, treasurer. Thank you. Yes. Um, and the only other call, oh, Councillor Kim, did you want to? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. So I just want to clarify then. So uh, we talk about an itemized report. Uh, we're talking about uh, submitting receipts for everything in light of the fact that we don't have a policy. If that's the case, I, I'm all for that. That would simplify everything. You know, if you buy a box of nails, there's a receipt, you just submit it. Uh, there's nothing wondrous about that. So uh, if that's what we're voting on here in terms of itemized report, then uh, that's fine. It's, and and Councillor, that 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 is. I mean, you, you well, as I mentioned earlier, you submit a receipt. It yeah. goes in. Um, the receipt details what what you actually bought. So the, it's not that hard to itemize uh, the list of what you've provided as far as receipts. And as we stated, I think it's important that um, it's until policies in place. Ultimately, that's all it is. It's until policies in place. Okay, so I'm just going to ask the clerk just to make sure how many times has everyone spoken to this amendment? Pardon? Okay, everyone else spoken once. Councillor Gallo, second time. Thank you, and I'm okay with the the, the changes. I have no issues with uh, uh, an itemized report and receipt. That's what we do already when we go to co yeah. to um, conferences. I mean, we submit everything that we've spent money on. Um, so it's pretty consistent um, and no offense, but I think it should be with the, the um, approval authority should be within the staff um, and out of the political realm. So I'm okay with that, that change as well. Thank you, Councillor. No, none taken. That's what I said. I, you can take it out of my hands. I'm more than happy. Take <laughs> Councillor Thompson, second time. Thank you uh, to the clerk. And while I'm, I'm in one sense, fine with whatever council decides, we do have an approved policy in place. And I'm a little concerned that um, an amendment, a motion can do away with an approved policy and supplement it with a secondary process. And so I guess through you to the clerk, um, uh, is that a motion as it stands valid because it essentially is contrary to policy 57. Or do we need to do something further such as waive procedural bylaw or do add something to say that in this case, this is going to um, uh, supersede policy, the, the provisions within 
policy 57. I, just in terms of the process, you know, we have lots of existing policies in place. And I'm concerned that we're just putting an amendment on there that all of a sudden supersedes what's been what's in what's in place today. Mr. Clark. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, it's an interesting point by Councilor Thompson. I, I, um, I'm not familiar with the policy enough to or to um, to speak directly to it. I think I might I could make an argument maybe that um, that the policy I'm certain the policy doesn't contemplate ward budgets, and this um, and this you can make an argument that this is slightly different than the the normal member the council's expenses on their own travel on for conferences and things like that so i can maybe draw a distinction there if council's comfortable um but like councilor thompson suggested another way around it is to waive policy 57 as it applies to ward budgets and um and have the cao and treasurer be the approval authority for those so Councilor, if i just while you may not be clear i mean it's, it's clear it, it's about the reimbursement of the figure so it says when paid directly to a member of council reimbursement of expenses is subject to policy number 28 and approval of the mayor and the treasurer so any any time the town reimburses a member of council, it is subject to this policy and the approval of those two uh, authorities. And so that's my point: is that if if this is the direction of council, how are we superseding the policy that is in place? Mr. Clark, through you, Mr. Mayor. That's a great point by Councilor Thompson. I, if that's if that's what the wording is, and this is that's how this would work. Um, you know, that council would submit receipts to be reimbursed. So um, I think, yeah, I, I would, this, this specifically clause number two wouldn't be um, in order in this motion. Thank you. Answer. So Mr. Clark, I'm, I'm going to go to you. Uh, then how do we have, then how do we do something that we don't, that is not in order? Uh, we would waive either uh, put a motion on and uh, the, um, what the motion would be a, a way to waive uh, clause or policy 57 as part of this. Uh, you know, that policy 57 be waived to allow the CAO and treasurer to be a th approval authority for award expenses. So moved. For and okay. Councilor Gillen, you second? You good? And you're going to add that into the second clause, Mr. Clerk, is what you're saying? Okay. I'd like to see it. Yeah, because you're waving a, you're basically waving a policy procedure. No. No. It's just the policy. Okay. No, I don't need two thirds. I'm just waiting until I get it on the screen. I just want to make sure we have all the, uh, the language is correct to everyone's liking. It, it would need to be because as it stands, it's still it's still relating to board budgets at the end. Councilor Gallon? Councilor Gillen? Councilor Gillen? Councilor Thompson, did you, you still had the floor? You're done? And did you want me to split it? It's fine? Okay. I see no other comments. Call the vote. And that carries back to the main motion as amended. Councilor Gallo, you still have the floor. 
We good? Thank you, Councillor Reese. Actually, Councillor Reese, before I go to you, because I think we're going to be a little bit longer, we have to take our health break. Okay, and we'll come back. Is that good? We'll do our 10 minute health break, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> I know we're going to be a bit longer, so it's I, I should call it now. It is nine o'clock.
E2. Can I get it? Council Kim, Mr. Downey, starting back. So, Councilor Weiss, the floor is yours. Thanks very much. Um, the item is regarding the Aurora Sports Hall of Fame that was tentatively approved pending the receipt of financial statements for review. Um, the 20, 2021 statements were received uh, yesterday along with some uh, balance sheets uh, and uh, profit and loss for 2022, which are unaudited and, and don't represent the actual financial statements. Um, and we had a planning meeting last night, and I'm sure a lot of other people haven't done a very deep dive on, into those statements. And my, in fact, I only took about a half an hour, 45 minutes, and had one discussion about it. Um, so there are a few inconsistencies that I want to point out. Um, uh, for one, the stated operating reserve uh, that was uh, made during the budget, budget, pre budget presentation of around 75K and the 2022 financials uh, reports that the organization has just over 126,000 in their operating reserves. I understand that best practices are not for profits and charities are usually to keep at least six to uh, 12 months of operating reserve for their expenses. Um, and considering the expenses that I lo looked at even for 2022 or 91K, that this means this is we're at the upper end and beyond. It's about 127% of uh, what is recommended uh, as best practices. Um, there are a number of other things in there having to do with the education uh, budget that uh, they probably couldn't do because they weren't allowed in schools for the last two to three years yet we we're uh, providing 13,600 or something for the last three or four years, which may mean that's why some of the money has been uh, banked by them in their operating reserve. So uh, I don't want to hold up the budget and the budget approval for this right at this time, but I think it's time for us to take a look at this organization and perhaps others with respect to the uh, Financial Advisory Committee and to do a little deeper dive on what our policies are around um, providing uh, funding to people and perhaps their operating reserves and also keeping a better track of their budget lines and what they're spending their money on and deliverables. I know when I do uh, grants elsewhere, there's also there's deliverables and you have to report on those deliverables where the money was being spent. We just had a conversation here about spending five or six bucks on a uh, bag of nails and um, and us being responsible for that, that we're talking about these kinds of funds going out to community organizations. And I think the same rigor ought to be supplied or provided uh, to them as well. So I don't wanna hold the budget up for tonight, but I would like to have a recommendation or some thoughts about uh, putting these types of things on the FAC uh, during the next term. Thank you, Councilor Reese. Uh, uh, Ms. Wainer of Van Kessel, I'm, I'm not sure if this, I think they are on our schedule to come to the Finance Advisory Committee, but I think it's a, a, a great suggestion by the Councilor. So, Ms. Wainer of Van Kessel. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So as part of the FAC, we do a line by line review of the departmental budgets and we also do invite our community partners that we fund. So during those reviews, you get the opportunity to ask some questions about their detailed financial statements and uh, take that time to review their overall financial picture and how we're funding them. Councilor? Uh, thank you. And as I don't want this to be uh, construed that I'm, uh, I have any negative effects around the, uh, the Aurora Sports Hall of Fame as a co-founder of it. I want to see them succeed. I know they're coming into their 10th year. And so there may be some needs to do some special items on it, but I do want, I think we need to take a look at this going forward. Absolutely. And thank you, Kelly. And I, and, and I agree. And I think that it's, that's, I think why, you know, Councilor Thompson might mention this, and maybe I'm going to steal a little bit of his comments, but it's kind of why it was created so we could go through all these organizations to ensure that every dollar that goes out from this building, there's value to it, regardless of whether it's within our departments, whether it's an organization. So absolutely. And I think it's a great suggestion that we, we take that deep dive in all the organizations that we give taxpayer dollars to. So. Yeah, thank you. That's my priority. 
Thank you. Councilor Garner. Thank you. I, and I missed the very beginning of that. But um, with respect to this organization, well, with respect to organizations in general, some we know will never be self-sustaining like the Aurora Cultural Center. But I think that there's an expectation for others to become self-sustaining, if, if my understanding is correct. So, um, you know, it, when we're looking at the organizations, I think it's a good idea to go over the organizations. So we just have to keep that in mind, which ones will always need help and which ones we would like to encourage not to need help anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Thank you. You know, I'm certainly supportive of uh, Councillor Weiss's uh, idea of looking at policies surrounding the funding of, of various organizations and deliverables. I mean, at the end of the day, that's always been part of our role is to to look at establishing policies or where there are gaps to address it. Um, yes, we do those line by line reviews throughout the, the year uh, with our community partners and with the departments. But I I think, you know, if I understand Councillor Weiss's comments above and beyond that review, he wants to ensure that we have these policies in place, uh, uh, regardless of the organization. It's about anybody that we fund. We want to make sure that we're being consistent in terms of what our asks are, what our expectations are, deliverables, et cetera. Um, and certainly, I, I welcome the opportunity to, to work with them on it. Uh, at, at the FAC level and, and come up with some sort of draft for council then to, to weigh in on and ultimately approve if, if I interpret his comments right. Um, um, Councillor Weiss, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to say yes. Do I, <laughs> Councillor Weiss, that, you look forward you. to it? Yes. Absolutely. And since you're sitting on fact with uh, myself and Councillor Thompson, I'm sure we're going to have some great discussions as far as how we move forward and ensure that value is brought for every dollar. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this item? Councillor Gardner, I'm gonna call a vote. So if, yeah, I just I just wanna make sure you're part, of, if it's not working, I'll ask you to state your, well, so I'm gonna call the vote. The motion as amended. Councillor Gardner, are you on or did you want to just, yeah, what would you like? Yes. Councillor Gardner is a yes. Oh, I thought I, oh, okay. No, I didn't hit submit. Sorry. <laughs> and that carries unanimously. Okay. Council 9.2. And that's the memorandum uh, regarding committee appointments for the 2022-2026 term of council. Um, someone like to move this? Just move it first and then we, yeah, I know you need to do the amendment. Did you wanna move it first? Councilor Gallo, second, Councilor Gillen. Councilor Gallo, amendment, it's on. Just to add the um, traffic safety advisory committee and um, that I'm happy to be on the fourth committee. Did I say that already? Fourth okay. committee. <laughs> Also, I remember when I, uh, 2014, when I first got elected, I sat, I think I sat on five or six. I think there was a point no one wanted to take any others. And I just, yeah, I'll do them all. But thank you for doing that, Councillor Gallo. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's, that's just friendly. I think we'll just, yeah, we'll just, Councillor Gillen, you're okay with just adding that. And Councillor Gallo will be sitting on that. And obviously, we, we will have to change the Community Advisory Committee name to Parks and Rec. Yes. If we can do that as well. And Councillor Weiss will be sitting on that. Okay. No, we don't sit on, on compensation. We'll leave it at one. And then if we need to, we can we can always adjust and, and add another councillor if we have to at that point. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Does everyone want want to wait for the actual wording to come up, or we do? We all understand what's what's going on. Oh, it's coming up. Okay. Active Transportation and Tra Traffic Safety Advisory Committee, Councillor Gallo, and 
we will change that name of the community advisory committee. Okay. <laughs> All right. If no other comments or questions, I will call the vote. That carries. All right, council, regional report. Someone like to move that. Councilor Kim, Councilor Thompson, any comments or question on the regional report? Seeing none, call the vote. Councilor Thompson. Oh, sorry, that carries. New business, Councilor Weiss, new business. Councilor Gillan. Thank you, just a, a couple things um, through Mr. Mayor to Ms. Wayne Wright Van Kessel. I, I meant to bring this up earlier at budget, but just, you know, it's a simple little just explanation just for us to know about the BIA update and kind of what that means within um, the budget or presentation from them and their organization. Ms. Wayne Wright Van Kessel. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, for the BIA to establish the, their their levy for the town budget, they would need to come to us prior to May so that it can be set up. At that point in time, they'd be able to present their budget. The amount of their budget has no impact on our overall tax levy. We take that amount and we levy it, we levy it to their members and we include it on the final bills and the amounts that's collected is remitted to them. So whatever that amount is or ends up being, it's easy to adjust within our budget because it has no impact on the overall town's levy. Councilor? Great, thanks. Um, through Mr. Mayor to uh, Mr. Uh, CEO, Mr. Natarazny, uh, a couple things. Um, just because I public did make inquiries about the crosswalk redo, an update kind of when we should expect that to pot potentially be redone. Mr. CEO? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, um, the crosswalk was redone as part of the um, changes to that intersection uh, and the region. Um, looked after the cost of that. It's been determined that there was a, some defect in the application of the crosswalk. And so it's been agreed that it will be replaced. I don't have a timeline. It'll be weather dependent and when the, the uh, environment is right to redo it, but it will be redone. Councillor? Great, thank you. And um, I also had uh, put in a request about um, a plaque from a historic building down at Bloomington and Young Street, and we were to get some sort of update. I think I saw a brief email that you're looking into that. I just didn't know if you had a timeline or you had any news to share on that. Mr. Sale? See, Mr. Mayor, actually, since I sent that email, I did get a bit more of an update. So um, uh, we will we are working with the province uh, to get their approval. Since it's their property, they actually have the ultimate approval. So we are now working that through the provincial process to get uh, alignment between uh, them and us in terms of what would be on uh, that plaque. So. Uh, I'll keep council informed as we progress down that uh, process. Councillor? Thank you. I appreciate that. And I am going to get these questions, so I'm sorry I'm putting you on the spot. Um, is this something that we just engage with the province now? Do, do you, or is this something that's been in the works and we're still waiting on it? Is there a way that we can, um, I guess, um, expedite this a bit? Is there any way we can add some pressure to say, hey, we need to get this done? If you just, just elaborate, because I am going to get these questions and I'd kind of like, like to know. Mr. Sale? Certainly through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I've asked those same questions, so I don't have an answer on that part yet, but I will figure out what uh, the, be the best path is to get it done as quickly as we can. Councillor? Thank you. And uh, finally, just uh, last question through Mr. Mayor, Mr. CEO, and I'm sorry I didn't uh, preface you on this uh, earlier, but just wonder if we can get that quick report on the Young and Mosley Street property. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, not necessarily a formal report, but you were going to give council just kind of like a, an update um, communication piece about um, the property at Young and Mosley. I know we talked about it right at the beginning of budget time, and you were going to kind of let us know um, a little bit about some of the inquiries I was making about the property. Yeah. Uh, through Mr. Mayor, we uh, have a, a meeting with the consultant that uh, we engaged with council's permission uh, in early February. So after that, we'll bring an update to council. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. 
Um, just uh, one last thing through Mr. Mayor to Mr. Downey. Um, I had sent an email about possibly communicating with um, operations about re rerouting one of the um, snowplow routes on Boulding um, to go around the entire loop as opposed to um, deflecting off the Nevin. From what I understand is that it continues on to the sidewalk side, which completes it snows it in versus the non-sidewalk side. And they observed that um, even the snowplow plow has trouble and um, almost uh, greatly almost, I guess, can stall the machine. They have trouble. It's just a really absorbent amount of snow. They've done it in the past where it's been rerouted. And I understand it's a reoccurring request depending on the years. Might be a you know, a couple years and five years and one year. But was, um, I just didn't know if maybe you had an update or an answer for me on that to see if we can reroute that properly so it's 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 not uh encroaching on the sidewalks the way it should mr downey through mr mayor uh so we received your email this morning uh i did talk to or send it off to staff uh we are taking a look at it to, to find out whether or not that is a more efficient and effective um uh, modification of that route and if it is then we will um uh, we will be doing it um uh, staff have not had an opportunity to look at it in detail at this point, though. Councillor? Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Councillor Gardner, new business? No, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Thompson, go ahead. Uh, through you to Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey, uh, during the last snowfall, which was which was fairly significant, um, I had a number of residents reach out to me about uh, you know wanting to know when their street was going to be plowed. You know, I referred to them to the Where's My Plow app, and and still even had some follow up conversations with them. And there was some confusion about how that Where's My Plow app works in terms of uh, understanding does it mean when the plow is coming or when it's passed, the colors and so forth. And so I took a look at it myself, and I would agree there's a little bit of confusion there. So. Perhaps you can just take a moment to, to explain how it works. And then also, is it possible to add some more um, contact or context or description on the app itself to explain some of the things? Because even for myself, when I first looked at it, the the difference between the roads that haven't been plowed and, and the, the roads that are being plowed in a certain turn, the colors are almost the same. One's like coral and one's like orangish kind of thing. And so I just found it a little bit um, challenging myself. I don't know if anybody else hears it from other residents, but you know, it never hurts to provide a little bit more uh, information about how that map or the the plow app actually works. Mr. Downey. So thank you. Um, so through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so where my where's my plow has actually been on our website for uh, quite a period of time. Um, the way it works is the route uh, originally shows up red, so it should be red. Uh, as opposed my to phone. coral or any other color, but it should be red. Um, so I will take a look at the colors. But uh, um, my understanding is, it, is it, it starts off as red. Uh, we have GPS on the trucks. Um, and as the truck goes through the route, uh, as it clears the uh, that path, it becomes blue. So, um, uh, and it refreshes every 10 minutes. It also, it has a time lapse on it that tells you uh, that truck was there you know, an hour and 42 minutes ago or whatever, uh, whatever that is. Um, if the truck stops for 10 minutes, um, it will not show uh, that it's, it's plowing. So if they um, stop and have coffee or whatever, um, that may be a short period of time that uh, it won't show up uh, uh, on there because it, uh, it hasn't moved in the last 10 minutes. Um, but uh, uh, simple, the most simple fashion would be it starts red, it then follows through and turns blue. And when it's all blue, you know that at least the truck's been through your particular route. Thank you. And and I think, you know, that was one of the basic questions. The first people were calling me, I said, does it mean that when they look at the colors and they talked about the hours being zero to two hours or two to four hours, does that mean that's, is that when the plow is supposed to come? or not, and, and that's what I mean, that if somehow we can just put a few more little bit of information on it to guide people with respect to uh, what it means, um, it would be helpful. And while I see it here on the screen, it is red, it's the four to eight hours, which is kind of coral color that the two of them kind of confuse me, but I don't know if anybody else on the screen, but again, 
I just think that uh, it, it's a good tool, but some more information or descriptors could be helpful for the residents to be able to um, uh, utilize, especially if we continue to direct them to it or utilize it to be able to answer questions. So thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Garner, is this to this or is this a, you have new business? You have new business? Yeah, I'll come back to you then. Go ahead. New business. I didn't I didn't know that that was really a question. I think he was just Councillor, were you expecting an answer? No. no. Yeah, he's just leaving it with him. So go ahead. Yeah, no. Councillor Gardner, new business. Go ahead. Uh through Mr. Mayor to Mr. Downey. Um I know that making sure the snow is plowed and the sidewalks are plowed, the roads and the sidewalks is a very difficult job. And we've had a lot of snow close together. I do want to say I've had more complaints this year from my residents than any other. Um, I don't know particularly why. Um, but will you uh, discuss this with the team and see what we can do about it? Shadani, I'm, I'm assuming you'd say yes, but go ahead. Certainly, we're happy to discuss with the team. We're we're finding some challenges ourselves out there. Um, yeah. We have people jumping out in front of the plows, uh, which is never a good idea. Um, we have people who are plowing snow onto other people's properties, have a private person plowing and then plow snow into other people's properties. We have private uh, companies coming in and blocking our sidewalks, um, things that we haven't had in the past. Um, as, as much as we have this year. So we've had some challenges ourselves uh, with regards to uh, making sure that our roads are clear and our sidewalks are clear and safe as well. Um, but uh, um, uh, we, uh, we also, as part of our program, we've identified what we call hotspots throughout the town. Um, and those hotspots are areas uh, that we know are always a challenge, um, more from the geometry of the road with regards to the plowing and and so we take extra measure in those particular areas to reduce as much of the uh, depositing of snow on property as possible. Um, but it is not always easy to do. Um, and uh, everyone would love to see no windrow at all. I get that. Um, it's just not that possible. Um, and we, um, we sometimes have some difficulty finding places to put the snow. Councillor? Yes, and staff has been excellent uh, responding to my concerns that I pass on on behalf of residents. Um, one situation, uh, I had a lady who had completely cleared her driveway, was just getting ready to go to a doctor's appointment. She saw the plow coming. And she was one of the ones who was doing this thing. I mean, well, needless to say, her her driveway became impassable so uh, you know is there any way um, i this is a ridiculous question i know but in this case it would have been so easy just perhaps to avoid her driveway so she could have gone to the doctor mr downey yeah. so through uh you Mr. Mayor, it's, it's always a challenge um as they say we've we've we're doing our very best to communicate through uh, through our communication division as much as we as we can. We do have some challenges, and 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 for instance, that particular case, we find that people are not piling the snow on their side of the curb, but they're actually piling snow on the road. So they shovel their driveway, and part of that pile of snow is on the road. We need to plow to the curb. Right. Because we need to make sure that our catch basins are clear right. when the snow melts. Because right. we also get those complaints. You got uh, clogged catch basins come out. We have ponding water on our street. What, what are we doing about that? And that's a result of not getting all the way back to the curb because we do our best. Um, but And so part of that challenge as well is sometimes when we go through, um, and in some particular uh, areas of town, people are putting their garbage containers on the road and we're communicating right. with them. We're sending knockers to them. We're right. knocking on their door. And, and what happens is they need to keep it past the curb because we need to plow to the curb. So what happens is when we go to that street, we can't, we are that far from the curb. We come back after everyone has cleared everything and come back and plow all that snow into their driveway. 
because we couldn't do it the first time. And, 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 and that's a challenge for everybody because we need to get back to the curb. But if the garbage containers were put in the right place to start with, they wouldn't have had that issue. So we, we continue to communicate that as well. Um, um, but, uh, and that's some of the information coming back from us as well. And as they say, we've been working really closely with our communications team. They've been great to, to send those messages out. Uh, we have now big billboard signs out in those particular areas and we know where they are. Friday is our worst day. Uh, so we know that. And, and so we got the signs out, but people are still doing it. And, and so it's, and so it's going to become a challenge when, the garbage truck goes away. We come back three hours later and plow that windrow back into their driveway. And they wonder why in the world was not that done in the first place. So yeah, we're having those challenges this year as well, more than we've had in the past. Councilor? Do, um, do, you, do you know if we have more complaints from uh, contracted out service than we do from our own team? Mr. Downey? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we used to. We don't anymore. Um, okay. We've been working very hard with our contract plow uh, company. They're very good. Um, and um, uh, they don't have the turnover staff that we have in some other contracts. Um, but uh, they're very good. We we actually uh, go th with through them with some with certain areas, particularly the hot spots, so that we make sure that we, we keep... Um, uh, any concerns down to a minimum. We're never going to be 100%, and we realize that, but um, but certainly whatever we can do to help or assist, we're more than happy to do. But at the end of the day, um, we need to put the snow someplace. Councilor? All right, so thank you. The more communication you can put out there, the better. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Gittleland, did you have another new business? Wanted to follow up through uh, you, Mr. Mr. Downey, on that, if you don't mind. Um, do you think that because there's so many challenges this year that you might be making extra effort to say we must be going to the curb, going to the curb, and maybe a different driver comes out and the prior big snowfall we had was, you know, three feet or four feet out. And so now we have that existing snow mound that was created by the original plow a few weeks ago. Now we're saying, guys, we got to do this to the curb, do this to the curb. And then they go out and then all of a sudden now they're going to the curb and taking that excess mound and it's creating a lot more windrow than maybe normal. Because I know we're trying to do some correction. Do you think that maybe that could be maybe as a result of maybe from one snowfall to another that we're experiencing? Mr. Downey? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we've always plowed to the curb. We are not doing anything different this year. Um, what we're finding is some of the residents that we're dealing with are, 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 are responding differently to us. And as they were running into some challenges, people pushing snow and following the road. Uh, so pushing the snow from the driveway right under the road and following the road. Uh, we've been talking to bylaw with regards to that. Um, and those are issues that we haven't had in the past, but we've always plowed to the mm -hmm. curb. It's a requirement that we need to get there because when we get into melt, we have to make sure that that curb lane is clear so that the water has some place to win. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I, I'm, I'm going to make a comment and say that you guys do an excellent job plowing my row where I live. It just happens to be. And, and, I, and I understand the whole basin thing. This year in particular, I have found that you are, have been closer to the curb than in previous years. And I say this from experience, I have a basin and I always dig it out. So I, every single year, this year, it's a lot better. It's about, I see half of my basin. I still um, dig some of that out because I understand the importance of that. It's just like, I guess perhaps maybe with the excess snow and it's heavy and it gets wet and, and maybe they're trying to go closer to the curb. And it, I just kind of feel like depending on the driver, but I just wanted to say, like, I'm not trying to point out that, um, you, um, any, um, criticizing there's probably to your point, you know, you have some third party companies that are fouling differently and it's a different kind of situation. Uh, I think you guys are doing a great job in trying to manage what you have. So I just kind of want to thank you for that. And, um, you know, just hopefully spreading the word out there too. It's like, we're not perfect. We're trying to go as close to the curb as we possibly can. And also dig out those those basins if you do see it. I mean, it's important. I know I get the, the flooding at the bottom of my driveway if it's not there. So it's important. 
Um, but to Councillor Gardner's point, I think this is just an isolated incident to where it's like you kind of hope have some common courtesy. And I think that's kind of what we're kind of hoping for. But uh, communication, I don't know if drivers change or shift, but communication, communication, and I, it's got to be a tough job. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, I was just thank I you. needed to follow up on that. Okay, thank you. Um, how's it going? New business. Thank you. I just wanted to um, some comments about. I, I was at um, Saint Jerome's um, Catholic School last night at a parent council meeting. That's why I wasn't at public public planning. They had invited me in to discuss some things, and I want to just update council on some of their their issues. Maybe it's a it's a ward thing. One of them isn't, but um, there's a crosswalk on Hollingwood Trail that I've already communicated with Mr. Ramuno and trying to figure out how to make that a little more uh, safe for the the students to get to both of the schools that are there. Um, there's uh, the ongoing issue, or at least discussion, of how to um, get the, the school kids to um, use adjacent parks um, during the school day and figure out how to uh, better streamline that as opposed to them consistently having to apply for permits. Um, and also, um, there was some discussion about uh, taxes and uh, the um, when there's a, a new purchaser to a home and the default is uh, taxes goes to the public system um, and how to better understand that how uh, the new homeowner can decide which uh, school board to to fund their taxes to the default apparently is the public school board. Um, so just, just more, some more communication on, on how that, that works. Um, and lastly, um, if anyone wants to, um, help flood Queens Diamond Jubilee Park <laughs> skating rink, um, they started today flattening the, uh, do I see any hands going up? Yeah. I'll see you there at 3 a.m. <laughs> if anybody uh, wants to, yeah, it's my fifth committee. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Councilor Kim, new business? Okay, thank you. Um, I just have a couple, one about, um, just about the pause. Mr. Downey, I, I know that some of the other municipalities, um, they've they've started naming their plows and giving them uh, unique names. Uh, uh, Darth Blader, I think uh, uh, Snoop Scoop or something like that. There's there's a whole bunch of them in there. And I think that uh, the, the residents in the community just kind of, they have fun with it. And so maybe it's something that we can look at and maybe uh, look at implementing down down the road or whether it's for this year or whether it's, uh, did you have, do you want to add something to that, Mr. Johnny? Sure. Uh, Mr. already being done. Okay. So uh, we've already had a contest internally naming the plows um, and that the guys had a great time uh, doing it. Uh, they came up with some pretty inventive names. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we're going to be putting them on the trucks. Awesome. Um, uh, the actual name of that uh, uh, that they that they name their truck. So, uh, yeah, it's something we've already uh, we've already considered, and it's well on its way. So it won't be long before you actually see some of those names on there. Perfect. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And then um, just a comment in general. I know that I mean, obviously, we we have heard uh, all of us uh, receive. Uh, complaints, concerns, uh, you know, obviously we want to provide the best possible service when it comes to snow removal, but I just did want to add uh, that our staff have done a phenomenal job out there. I've received many compliments uh, as well um, of, of the work that staff have done, the fact that they're out there, uh, you know, uh, for a long period of time out there and making sure that our roads are safe for our residents. So I wanted to send that along uh, the thanks, Mr. Down, if you can send it to staff, because um, you know, we always get the complaints, but we also, you know, when we get those compliments as well, we want to make sure that uh, uh, everyone realizes that uh, they are doing a tremendous job. So thank you on on that. Um, I also just did want to announce uh, as uh, we are a council, um, we are, we have approved our 2022 to 2026 of our public library board members. And I want to congratulate each of the members. Uh, and I think we're all looking forward to working uh, with them. Um, and the members are Christina Chu Hum, John Clement, Lauren Hanna, Adam Mobs, and Greg Smith. So congratulations. And uh, as I said, looking forward to working with them. And I believe Councillor Weiss and Councillor Gallo will be working closely with them as they are on the board as well. 
Um, and then just to finish off before I, I do have some sad news, if, if anyone uh, does not know, uh, former counselor uh, Betty Peterson uh, has passed away. Um, so uh, on behalf of uh, Aurora Town Council, as well as all Aurorans, I offer my deepest sympathies and condolences to uh, Ms. Peterson's uh, family and friends. Uh, she was a tremendous counselor. She did a lot of good in our community. And so uh, I just wanted to pass that along and make sure everyone's aware. So, Council, uh, with that, I'll ask for a motion for the bylaws. Councilor Gallo, Councilor Thompson, any comments or questions on the bylaw? I'll call the vote. And that carries. Sorry, confirming bylaw. Councillor Gardner, Councillor Thompson, all those in favor? Opposed? That carries. Before I call adjournment, I just got one more thing to say. And that's I want to thank everybody, uh, council, staff, uh, for all the tremendous work that they've done during the budget process. Uh, we've delivered a budget of 2.5 plus 1% for capital, and we've approved it tonight. And everyone has done a tremendous job. And so thank you. Um, and uh, I guess looking forward to 2024, which is coming up real quick on us for our budget process. And I know that we'll, we'll, uh, staff will do a tremendous job again uh, for that budget. And I know council uh, will work uh, their hardest to make sure that we have uh, uh, an excellent budget for our residents and our community. So thank you, everyone. And with that, I will uh, call for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Councillor Gillian, Councillor Weiss, all those in favor? Opposed? That carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.